with cash in unjustified fines. Mr Mayor, I'm sure this won't surprise any member, but I do struggle, struggle to give any credit to the Cabinet member for finally ending the relationship with Kingdon, given that it was Labour who initiated the contract, and given it was Labour who continually defended the Kingdom, some still have today, and refuse to listen to concerns. We know Labour sought to close down any criticism of the contract as being soft on little outs. Indeed, Council of Fouch has repeated that today, a tactic they pursued vigorously against Councillor Cleary when trying to unseat him in Birkenhead. How did that go for you? <laughs> Mr Mayor, this Labour Council visited Kingdom upon the people of Wirral and now they have dispatched them without a plan about what to do next. The Cabinet member has resorted to a default position of dibbering and delay, just like with the PSPO or the dog ban plan. It's a case of let's leave the difficult decisions until after the local elections. Mr Mayor, the people of Wirral deserve to have at least an interim enforcement policy. They deserve a council with a plan, a cabinet member with a clue about what to do next, but Mr Mayor, we're left with neither. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart Whittingham. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I was going to speak tonight, but you know, first I'd like to commend Council Lynch. Uh, you know, she was a fresh cabinet member, took on this portfolio, uh, and was in a short period of time. Um, you know, make these new difficult decisions that are facially neutral. The mention was made earlier the highway service. Um, I just spoke to Ryan Council that I've done my research and brought that highway service back in house uh, less than six months ago. And over the couple of months, uh, I'm confident we're going to be seeing, you know, seeing huge improvements um, on top of uh, the record of estimates making on the road network and the, and, uh, the street lighting network with the uh, place of every street light and LED units. Um, now, as we are all, all aware, because of government's austerity, uh, we've had to take significant money, amounts of money out of the highway service, which has, of course, affected, <laughs> which has, of course, affected uh, levels of service. And you now, I'd just like to remind council that the free independent council is going to pull its budgets. Thank you. Councillor Hampton Sykes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Like many others tonight, I wasn't going to speak until a uh, certain point to raise about the committee that I'm on, the Environment Committee, and some of the comments that the Cabinet member um, made around the fact that Kingdom did a sweep of the borough and they just did an equal, um, <coughs> an equal approach to that whole constituency uh, of world. Um, and basically, that's just not the case. As, as Kingdom told us, and as Council Office told us, Kingdom did what the Council asked them to do. They went to the places where the council asked them to go. They tackled the issues, like the two days for the dog file, which seems like a very short space of time, given it's such a priority uh, that the council asked them to do. They went to Birkenhead and targeted litter uh, from cigarette books, as the council officers, directed by the cabinet member, asked them to do. So, all the time the kingdom was asking, they were doing what the council and the cabinet had asked them to do. So, anything that has come about from this is because of how they've been directed. Now, the heavy handed approaches that they take are totally unacceptable, as is the, the issues that they've had of officers from Kingdom being under attack. Everyone would condemn that as well. But the clear issue is, as you said in your, your first sentence, is it's about the economic viability. It's whether the model that was taken was the way that Kingdom could do it on the cheap because they can get the most from the fines, they can make the most money by targeting the easy targets, which was, in Lita's case, it was the cigarette books, and the sweep that was coming, which was the PSPO, because it's much easier to find someone whose dog goes over a line on the, uh, a football pitch than it is to follow someone around to see if their dog's foul. <coughs> and this is, this is what it was all about. It was all about kingdom making money. Now, the issue that people aren't raising is something that it's not Kingdom didn't only have this model, and when they came to speak to us at the last committee, they actually said that all councils don't use this model. Some councils do allow people to have a warning first, and do allow them to ask the officers to ask them to pick it up. And these are contracts that are run by Kingdom. Again, this is because this is how our council and our cabinet had asked Kingdom to operate. The blame lies solely with the way that we've run the contract. 
and how we ask kingdom to deal with it. And I think it would be wrong to lay all blame at a, an external organisation without first looking in at ourselves and how the, the contract was run by the cabinet member. Thank you. Councillor Bill Gilchrist. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just go back to July 2018 because I was rereading the notes attributed to Councillor Patrick when he was the cabinet member when he was here. But it says that he was satisfied the level of complaints regarding the actions of the contractor were low. I'll read that again. I think the penny dropped. The issue is that, as Councillor Sykes has said, this was a contract monitored by officers and directed by cabinet members. When we took this to scrutiny in July 2018, the writing was on the wall, because the people who came to scrutiny gave good examples of how they had been treated, how evidence wasn't properly gathered, and how even for an accidental blowing of a piece of paper out of a car boot from a parcel being put in it, an old lady was harassed. So that is the history. Now, Councillor Leach referred to education. I looked at today, keep written tidy, who have this campaign about cigarette butts. I'm grateful that the pollution from cigarette butts has been mentioned in the toxins, but have I seen any great campaign by the world over the past year about that issue? I haven't come across it. And if I haven't come across it, I'm not sure the public have. Councillor Whittingham has led me onto another path, because when that contractor went from highways, we were left picking up the cost of refurbishment of a depot that they had carried out. They did work in the demo, we had to pay them back for the work they'd undertaken. And it strikes me that within the contract as I read it, two P applies now that we have the Kingdom contract ending. And what I'd like to know what the settlement is. We'll be told it's all highly commercial, sensitive and confidential. And sooner or later, we need a document saying what the hidden costs were and where the staff that work for Chief for the Kingdom are currently. Finally, I know it's a, uh, an interesting joke, you'll forgive it, but we talk about cigarette butts. This is a contract that has burnt our fingers. We have to learn lessons. <laughs> No more speakers, we'll go to seconders. So, Councillor David Mitchell, seconder of the Liberal Democrat motion. You have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, for the starter. Um, quite a few relevant points and issues have already been highlighted by uh, the members of the Council in relation to this particular contract. Uh, we all received an email, uh, well, we all received plenty of emails, but I I, like everybody else, received one today which highlighted three particular uh, events that took place with the members of our community who were penalised by uh, the King of the Company. One poor gentleman who had a, uh, a mental disability was approached by him for dropping a piece of tissue. He said that took the cut. The guy was so traumatised by him, he forced his sister to pay the payment, which he couldn't afford. It meant some scarce of pay, you didn't have enough money to pay the rent. This is the kind of thing that was going on. We've all read this email today. We've all seen it. The same company approached the same gentleman a week later and did exactly the same. Thankfully, his sister stood up and argued the case for him, went to court and won the case. That was one of three that was highlighted today. Councillor Leach asked us what we mean by irrelevant issues. What do you mean a classic example? From an elderly couple in my ward, the lady was pushing her disabled husband in a wheelchair past the bin, which was full to the top. There was an umbrella at the side which fell down in her way. She moved the umbrella out of the way so she could get past, and she was fine by kingdom. That's what I mean by irrelevant. This does not need to happen in this day and age. They followed that lady and harassed her for quite a long distance. That was where for the was nothing to do with her, she was making a good, clear access for her and her disabled country in the wheelchair. I know council folks go on, always does, fix all the reasons for highlights. The legislation is out there that we can use the legislation. It depends on how you track the what. Do you do it with a sledgehammer, in the labor wants it, or do you do it with a hand hammer, which we believe is the right way to do it? 
there is more than one way to do this. We believe there is another way. And the Council of Norway went on about the government of asking us to go back and uh, have an all party uh, discussion about this. We also met, met our recommendation. Because at the very end, it does say, Accordingly, the cabinet member is requested to convene a meeting with the party spokesperson to lay the foundations for a new approach to the provision of the service that enables will to move forward after the recent events and criticisms. And it's the criticisms that have been the major part of it. Members have said in the highlight that he likes to put the cabinet member to the issue of the relation of waste I take part in that matter to do that. The closure of the whole contract, I believe, took place because we moved this from the moment to ask this particular meeting to take place. There is um, a need for the service that is fit for the purpose, and uh, I would expect the Council to support that motion. Thank you, sir.